That's what I'm talking about, love. Love this morning, love. Because I live from love. Did you know that? Did you know that? So um, this morning, my title. Who knows what my title is? And I took liberty with the spelling. Did you notice? R E space D. Fine. Because we're also fine, you know? You know you're fine. You are. You are, and so am I. One thing I know about being so fine <laughs> is that the reason I am so fine and you are so fine is that God is all there is. Let's say that together three times. God is all there is. God is all there is. And God is all there is. So good morning, beloveds. Do you believe that God is all there is? A little bit? That's a little bit. All it takes is a little bit. It's like a little bit of cinnamon or garlic or hot pepper. A little bit sometimes is all we need to get our taste buds for more started. So I welcome you to this divine moment. This morning you are invited to be present with yourself. Aware of your thoughts, your feelings, and to allow this to be a moment that you reflect, remember, and ultimately then realign. A moment to reflect, remember, and realign with not only who you are, but also why you are. This morning, you're invited to reflect on the why as your universal truths that you carry and know. A moment to remember that you are the beloveds of the beloved. That you are a unique and valuable individualization of the one God, the one spirit, and each of us, you and I, imbued with every aspect of this universal goodness. Goodness. Goodness gracious. We're good. Spiritually, we are good. But we forget, don't we? We forget that we are intrinsically, we're imbued with, start out as that divine spark of goodness. What do you think happens at the moment of conception? There's a spark of life. And I believe that spark, that, that energy, that molecular power is always who we are. You are love. You are light. You are peace, power, beauty, joy, wisdom, and wholeness. I spoke in a previous lesson about our holiness, spelled W-H-O-L-E. We are whole and complete in truth. It's our thinking that separates us from that truth. What I also know is that you have been gifted with a mind, a mind which is divine and in divine oneness with God's mind, a mind that is filled with bountiful ideas for your life. And they are yours to glorify. Your gifts are yours to glorify. They're not mine to glorify. And mine aren't yours to glorify. We each are the glory of our wholeness and the gifts we bring. Now hear this. <laughs> you are a divine idea, and it's why you exist. You are a divine idea, and because of that, is the reason you are here in this life. So let's talk about this 
realignment, redefinement, shall we? What does it mean to realign? What does it mean to realign? For me, it's to come into agreement and to remind myself that I am a God being in divine partnership. For you to come into the agreement and to remind yourself that you are a God being in divine partnership. What does that mean? For me, it's oneness. That divine partnership is not, is not, there's no separation. There is no separation. Like, um, like, uh, like uh, gravity. That wouldn't happen without gravity. It'd just flow, wouldn't it? So there's a divine partnership in that. There's an agreement. How do you know gravity exists if there's no agreement? There's no oneness to that. You and I, divine partnership. Reverend Kathy and I, Soul mate, soul sister, soul brother. There's yin and yang. Remember them? The, the twins, yin and yang. And salt and pepper. You can name, <laughs> name your own. Yeah, but for me to play with words and, 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 and to, to go into the playful side of, of me um, reminds me to stay clear. Laughter causes clarity for me. The science of mind teaching reminds me as well. That there is not God's mind and your mind, but one mind in which we all live and move and have our being. It's available to all of us. All of us equally. Equally. I don't have more than you or anyone else. We have this availability equally, abundantly. But, you know, it's not accessed by all of us equally. It's available. It's available. It's like going to a buffet. What do you choose? It's all, a buffet that's always full <laughs> of all your favorite things. Do you say, oh, no, I'll just take a piece of lettuce <laughs> and a drop of dressing and one cherry for the cupcake. No, that's not how I do it, but you could. <laughs> but it's there equally, is my point. Question, what's the difference in the who and the why of you? Think about that for a minute. The difference in the who and the why of you. Well, the who of you is what you do, and the why of you is the purpose of being and behind the why, the, uh, the, the who of what you do. When you're in the divine moment of you, the why of you becomes clear. Are you confused? <laughs> Takes a moment. Takes a moment. Do I need those, do you think? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Partnership, you see, oneness. <laughs> Let me say that again. When you and I are in the divine moment of the why, the how becomes clear. The how becomes clear. This morning, I want to share the personal who and why of me. It's a long story, but I'll keep it under two hours. <laughs> I'll begin with the who. The who is what I know as an attachment, a tag, a label, a perception. That's the who you and I are is our labels. And so here are a few of my labels in chronological order from birth to now. 
With me? Okay. Birth. Gender. Male. Still. Just saying. <laughs> we have choices. Name. Michael, Patrick, Benson. Same today. Appearance. Depends on the decade and the eyesight. <laughs> you get to call that one. I try. What I appreciate. Music, art, clothing, dancing, theater, world travel. Love to have gone to teen camp. Um, spontaneous adventures. Humor. Fine dining. And I can't leave out Zinfandel. You know that one? Zinfandel. It's a musical instrument. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. Licensed cosmetologist, businessman, science of mind practitioner, ordained minister, teacher, student, currently spiritual co-director of this Center for Spiritual Living Chico. That's who. That's the who. All of these things that I just listed are the who's and what's of me, like nuts and bolts. The who's and what's of me. They are my human labels. Labels have brought me right here to this place. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because I would never have met all of you. Thank you very much. And well, what I know about labels, they're fine. And some from time to time must be redefined. You ever had that experience? You get into a job or you get into an experience, you get into a relationship, and you think, <laughs> well, what I know about labels also is they're subject to change. We get to grow. We get to evolve. We get to, we get to move, uh, first of all, in our what? in our why, back to our why of who we are. And then we get to step into a greater why we are. So I have an affirmation I'd like for us to do together. So if you'll repeat after me, the who of me is subject to change. First in my own mind, And when they are complete, they no longer serve me. I tell them, adios. <laughs> so, is that how you live? Or do we hang on? Do we hang on. You moved on, right? The Bidwells. Who knew it would be the Bidwells when you first started doing music? You don't know, do you? You don't know. You don't know. We just let our why say, keep going here, do what's over here, come back, step over here, do a little, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever you're called to do, when we listen to the why of who we are, it's real clear, it's real clear. How do you know when the who of you needs to change? For me, when the why of you is not fulfilled by that label. How many of you started down a career path, say to be a doctor or an attorney or whatever it is, and you get about, you get there and you go, you know, it's good and the money's good and blah, blah, blah. But I, it's not why I want to be here. It's not, not the why of me right now. Anybody? You ever change jobs? Any? Oh, yeah. Most of us have. Most of us have. So that leads me to the, to the next question. What is the why of you? Do you know why? 
Do you know why you're on the planet? Do you know why you're in this lifetime? Do you have a why? I have a simple answer without knowing, without labeling it. It's the inner spiritual urge that you feel. It's that true sense of self that you come to that says, oh, this is why. This is why I'm here. In other words, the why is the deeper, intuitive, pure spiritual reason behind everything you do. Everything you do. It is your divine purpose. You needn't raise your hands, but how many know their divine purpose? How many have a purpose statement? How many you know, have gone through that process? It's really quite uh, revealing. Because to uncover the why, you must first let go of all the who's. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let them all go. Ah. I did that. I did that. Well, it's an assignment that is quite an adventure into your spiritual self, that spiritual part of you. Of letting go of all of the who do you think you are. Pretty strong when you label yourself as something so strongly that you, you can't even imagine yourself as something else. I'm the wonder man, as I've called myself. You know, I wonder a lot about myself first. You know, and so questioning, questioning, questioning is always good for all of us to uh, have the why come up. Well, the journey of the why, I know for me, is an emotional one. Because it's ongoing. It's scary. Because you have to let go of all the labels and be vulnerable to permit your inner why to show up. Often for the first time. Go to camp. <laughs> you may not have a word for it, but you have a feeling for it. And so for me, the journey always begins by turning inward and asking yourself, why am I here? Why am I here? And trust your higher wisdom self. It's freedom. Let it loose toward a greater unfoldment for your life. I uncovered my why July 2014 at the ongoing minister's conference in Seattle, Washington. It was a gift for first-time ministers. And it's for that purpose of discovering why, the why. What is yours to do in ministry? And to keep asking the question, why, 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 why? My parents didn't like that. <laughs> why? Why can't I? No, you can't go in. Anyway, I'll hold another two hours. <laughs> but and here is my why. And I've shared it before, but I think it bears repeating. And it's my purpose statement, my purpose for being. I am here to serve humanity as a joy-filled voice of love and compassion, to embrace the spontaneous nature of spirit, thereby. Celebrating the abundant life. Sort of like a vision statement for your spirit. Because a vision statement is never complete. It's you reach for it, you reach for it, you try to get there. But it's an ongoing process that keeps the individual evolving spiritually. I am here to steer for humanity as a joy-filled voice of love and compassion to embrace the spontaneous nature of spirit, thereby celebrating the abundant life. Not celebrated, not going to celebrate, but now celebrating, celebrating. And since that moment, I have endeavored to be true to it. 
and remind myself of it often. Why? It keeps my mind and intentions for living clear and on course. Not only for me, but for all those with whom I come in contact with, like right here. So as I mentally move into each day, I reaffirm my purpose. The why of me is who I feel today. So my purpose I invoke every day within myself to stay on course, to stay clear. As human beings, our perceptions determine and thereby conclude the labels we think we are. But the truth is, each of us has the opportunity to feel another's why. To see through those labels. It's what I was talking about earlier, feeling the connection with people. You sense your why connects with their why. So, and it bears an inquiry. This life affords extraordinary insights, windows into the inner knower that we are. It's an awareness and receptivity of the why we are here. In his book, The Power of Awareness, Neville writes, creation is finished. Creativeness is only a deeper receptive, receptiveness. For the entire contents of all time and all space, while experienced in a time sequence, actually coexist in an infinite and eternal now. In other words, all that you have ever been or ever will be, in fact, all that mankind ever was or ever will be, exists now. This is what is meant by creation and the statement that creation is finished means that nothing is ever to be created. It is only to be manifested. You get that? Took me a minute. Creation and the statement that creation is finished means that Nothing is ever to be created. It is only to be manifested. It's that part of our knower when we have this divine idea. It's already created. We just have aligned ourselves with that. And we allow it to come into our lives. That's the manifestation. What is called creativeness is only becoming aware of what already exists. He goes on, the whole of creation exists in you. And it is your destiny to become increasingly aware of its infinite wonders. And to experience even greater and grander portions of it. Don't you love that? Even greater and grander portions of it. Who wants that? I know I do. Whatever that is for us. So the awareness of the why of you engages as you redefine a greater, grander you. We get to recreate. And you have the opportunity to redefine the who every time you remember the why. This is the day the law has provided by means of the intentions we set into motion. Let's affirm that together. This is the day the law has provided by means of the intentions we set into motion. The law of mind, the law of divine mind. That's the law we're setting into motion. Well, it's always in motion. We just say, hey, this is my clarity of all of that. Boom. Sandy Golke's affirmation today is, is really quite wonderful. And I'm going to uh, re repeat that for us. I set my intentions to say yes to new opportunities and adventures. Isn't that great? Two years ago, 
I set my intentions to say yes to a new opportunity called spiritual co-director of this community, a and which today carries a new la label, the Center for Spiritual Living Chico. So we've relabeled our center, haven't we? Change occurs. And during these two years, my why has deepened and clarified, don't you know? And my who has been modified and reconfigured, and numerous adventures have been realized. <laughs> Quite a journey, you know, when you're, when you're a director of anything. I have labeled these <laughs> my allowance. My allowance. It's sort of like your parents give you an allowance. So, but my, this allowance is not for what I do, not for the who, but for the why. So, in these two years, I allowed the love of and for another into my life. I also released 42 years of who by selling a home and clearing out a lot of past who. <laughs> I still got some who trailing along like pig pen, you know. There's, there's still some. There's still some. But, um, you know, it's really, it's really why. <laughs> it's a real why, you know. I have opened a new door for my life. And to share in this joy and love of this new door, I'm asking my soul sister, Reverend Kathy Fernandez, to join me. Hey, soul sister. Hey, give, me a, give me a hug, soul sister. <laughs> She's why I'm here. <laughs> I just wanted to honor that. I wanted to honor that. Because we chatted, oh, you know, uh, two and a half years ago now, and uh, it really hit my why. <laughs> hit my, it, still, it still does. So anyway, that's, that's why I'm here today. And so my, um, my life is taking a, a, a new um, label, okay? And this is all good. So on the 21st of May, I addressed the Stewardship Council in a letter, and I am removing my label as spiritual co-director, okay? Effective July 1st. History. When I stepped into this position on July 1st, 2016, it was the result of deep spiritual work. It was the demonstration of my knowing the love and unity and healing of the two CSL centers, Center for Spiritual Living Greater Chico and Chico New Thought Center for Spiritual Living. The love of God was the attracting energy, a greater unity and a healing realized. Here we are. I feel a sense of completeness. I am at peace with my decision. As an ordained minister, I am committed to the science of mind philosophy and its teachings and intend to remain an active member in good standing of CSL Chico. I am grateful for the, for the stewardship council, practitioners, and ministers, and staff, and the entire community here for their love and support the past two years. A special note of love and appreciation to my spiritual co-director, Reverend Kathy Fernandez, for opening this portal of possibility to me and to you. What a grand adventure it has been. I'm enriched beyond measure, and I thank you, soul sister, for your belief and trust in me. I am so blessed. I live life grounded in my purpose statement, as you've heard, and my succinct version is, I am here to be a joy-filled voice of love and compassion. So as I step through a new portal, 
I do so with love, with joy, with compassion, with wonder, into more love. So please know I'm not retiring, but rather experiencing a redefine. So, love and abundant blessings as we redefine all of this. And so as you think on this, know that I'm still going to be here being an attractive nuisance, <laughs> whatever, you know, some kind of an appearance of, uh, and so, <laughs> and um, I, I thought I will let, uh, I will let uh, Reverend Kathy and um, I'll call uh, Liz George up, please, uh, President of the Stewardship Council, to sort of clarify a bit of where I'm going to be. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Michael. Yes. Well, I, I, it's on behalf of the Stewardship Council, we honor you for being a model for us in following your why and your truth and, and letting yourself evolve uh, and also for being instrumental in uh, the reuniting of our Chico spiritual family, which is no small thing, and we're extremely grateful for that. And uh, Reverend Mike will be having an, a new letter of call that will be here at the center as a staff minister, so he will be continuing in all of his ministerial duties as speaking and teaching and loving, uh, compassionate care, uh, counseling, all, all that, that that you know him to do. And so some of the administrative duties um, have already actually been reassigned, uh, things that were the day-to-day, got to do them kinds of things. And we're just uh, knowing that spirit is leading us all to who will pick up and what those, some of those other things will be that, that you will be letting go of. So thank you again for who you are and, and all you've have brought and will continue to bring to our center. Thank you. So as Reverend Michael and I have spoken, um, the, soul, the soul connection is forever. forever. And um, what I honor about Michael is knowing his heart so deeply. Uh, a wonderful soul um, such a beautiful expression, very gracious, um, an excellent model. And um, uh, yes, it means new adventures, new unfoldment. It's, <laughs> it's uh, evolution. And, um, you know, I'm happy for you in so many ways. Happy for you and James. Happy for you letting go of those labels you just talked about. And I want to honor your courage to open that door and to find what feels best to you so that you can be the greatest expression of love that we can all know, experience, and be with. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. So a few closing remarks. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> and I shall be here. So um, only the label has changed. And so my love continues and shall uh, bloom and blossom. And um, if you feel the need to uh, chat with me, and you just may, I'll be having cupcakes, <laughs> OK, after service. So um, namaste, and so it is. And um, I will allow the musicians to come up and uh, give us some.